Frank Sinatra running things in the background for us. Um, our, for our audience following us online, you can find the captioning through the link in the description or by pressing the caption option on YouTube. And thank you to our panelists who are serving on our interactive public panel, who took the time to learn about our applicants and our process. And thank you for those of us following us um, on our live stream or on Twitter today as well. Cuyahoga Arts and Culture is the local public funder for arts and culture in Cuyahoga County. Our mission is to inspire and strengthen the community by investing in arts and culture. The goal of the Cultural Heritage Grant Program is to provide flexible funding for organizations with a primary mission of arts and culture that, rep that are representative of a culturally specific population. Before we begin, we want to acknowledge that the land we stand on and the place we call Cuyahoga County is land that was claimed by the United States government through force, displacement, and treaties negotiated in bad faith. We acknowledge those of the Shawnee, Miami, Erie, Ottawa, Potawatomi, and Haudenosaunee Confederacy, whose lands we stand on, and the thousands of Native Americans representing over 100 tribes who currently live in Northeast Ohio today. We thank the Lake Erie Native American Council for providing us with the information to develop this acknowledgement. We also want to acknowledge the collective stress and trauma that some of us may be experiencing and bringing with us today, from the still very real pandemic to the ongoing protests and uprisings to protect Black lives. Cuyahoga Arts and Culture stands in solidarity with those fighting against racism. We condemn the racist acts of police brutality that continue to impact Black Americans in Cuyahoga County and across their, our country. We realize that statements without action are empty, and so we commit to look inward as we continue to reshape our grant making and organization to be anti-racist and more equitable. We recognize that the creation and perpetuation of racial inequalities is embedded into government and grant making, and we pledge to confront the white supremacy that resides in our work. To arts organizations led by and serving people of color and artists of color, we see you, we hear you, and we stand with you. We are here to learn, listen, and take direct action against white supremacy. We invite organizations and artists to take action and connect with resources to advance racial equity in our organizations and communities. And of course, we thank everyone joining us today to be a part of CAC's work in, move, in moving toward racial equity. Now I'd like to introduce our executive director, Jill Paulson, with some words for our panelists and our applicants. Sure, thank you so much, Heather. And thank you everyone for being here, Tyrone, LaShonda, Jermaine, Marsha, and my full team that is either watching online or those of you who will be leading us through the process today. I am really proud, excited, and anxious to get into today. As I mentioned to some of you in advance um, of this public call, this is an amazing point for CAC to be bringing forward this program for testing it out. For those 11 of you who will be reviewed today, thank you, we are cheering you on and I'll let my teammates talk about the process a little bit more. But I think it's always just important as we settle into panel every year, some programs we've gone through panel for 10 plus years. This is the first year for this program in this way and know that we will continue to iterate, but it really was designed with feedback of cultural organizations in mind and making sure that wherever possible, we can center our commitment to racial equity. So I wanna just say to everyone who's watching and listening and maybe we'll be listening in the future as this is on our website, panel really is an important process for CAC. We get experts like this coming from all around the country or this time beaming in from their hometowns, providing their expertise. But as I've said to them, they really are an extension of our team. So while we're just a team right now of six or seven people, right? For this next week, we get 25 people on our team to come to help us review. They live our values. They've done the training. They've done the work and they've spent hours in your applications. So for uh, applicants, I hope you feel um, welcomed and heard during this process. For those of you who are panelists, thank you so much again for pushing us to change and evolve, but also um, hopefully taking back some of what you learn in Cleveland and Cuyahoga County to your communities today. So I think that's where we're at. I'll let my teammates talk more about you know, any details around funding criteria, vibrancy, any of extra 
pieces that I know everyone who's applied knows well, and those of you who have read the applications do as well. But my comments here are to thank you, to thank the team who's been doing amazing work for many months, to make thank our board for um, supporting our work, particularly in this area, and um, hopefully all the other arts and cultural organizations that even if they're not being reviewed today, I hope they tune in because I think organizations, the more than 300 that we fund can all learn something from what will be discussed today. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to my teammates. And I'm also then gonna soon bow out and begin to watch with everyone else on the YouTube channel. So I wish you all well. Thank you, Jill. At this point, um, I'd like to ask each panelist to introduce themselves. Please share your name, pronouns, where you are located and your professional connection to arts and culture. I've dropped an order in the chat, so we'll get started with Marsha. Hi, I am Marsha Festin. I am in Chicago. I'm the director of the Arts Work Fund, which is a collaborative grant making fund for small arts organizations. I'm also a practicing visual artist and I'm glad to be here today, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jermaine Smith, pronouns are he and they. I'm currently in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've been immersed in the arts and culture sector here since I moved here, so going on a decade, wow. And super excited to be back with CAC for another panel. I'm LaShonda Crow Storm. Uh, Pronouns are she, her. I am located in Indianapolis, Indiana. I am on the community side. I'm the community engagement director of Spirit in Place, where we use the arts, humanity, and religion as a vehicle to our community transformation. Uh, we run a series of community discussions called Powerful Conversations on Race uh, that dive into the dirty details of how race uh, impacts our lives and what we're going to do about it. We do these monthly. On my art side, I actually uh, am a visual mixed media artist that uses textiles and bronze uh, to talk about the history of racial violence, specifically lynching through textile traditions. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tyrone Spann. I am located in Hammond, Indiana, which is a suburb of Chicago. I, my pronouns are he and him. And also, uh, I, my current work is working with um, or found funders who work in this, in this field of assisting people with economic mobility, but I also have an extensive background in working and volunteering for art programs and also am a past panelist here with Cuyahoga and glad to be back again and look forward to this session today. Thank you and thank you all again for serving on our panel today. Um, so I'll walk through a little bit of our process and how the flow of panel will work for those following us on the live stream. The panel chair, myself or Julia Murphy, will introduce each applicant organization. Following that, the lead reader, uh, one of our panelists, will provide an assessment of the application, the budget, and support materials based on CAC's funding criteria. Each application will have a different lead reader. And then the panel chair, chair excuse me, will open the discussion for the full panel deliberation to support, dispute, or add comments about the application that were not initially presented by the lead reader. We've allocated five to six minutes per application. Once we, once we have just a minute left uh, in the review for each application, the background color of our co-chair will turn red. After this, the panelists will submit their scores, which will then be tabulated by CAC staff. To our applicants, please do not contact or address the panel in any manner during the deliberations electronically or otherwise. If an applicant believes that a panelist has presented incorrect information regarding their application, they should complete an information correction form, which is available on our website and within the audience guide. The panel chair will read the correction to the public and to the panel. An example of an objective misinformation would be a panelist misstating the number of performances detailed in an application. The information correction form is not an opportunity, it, I'm sorry, it is an opportunity to clarify what was submitted in that application. 
but it is not an opportunity to provide additional information. Forms that do this will not be read. After panelists complete, CAC will hold an informal information, I'm sorry, an informal session for public comment on the grant program and the panel review process. Audience members are encouraged to participate in the public comment session by submitting comments via our online form or by tweeting at ChiArtC. The deadline to submit comments is at the conclusion of the panel deliberation today, Wednesday, September 29th. Applications, scores, and panel comments will not be discussed at this time. Now, let's get started with our first review. Also, just a quick note, um, the order of review has changed for the last three applications being reviewed today, and that order can be found um, on our on our Twitter account. But the final three applications being read today will be the Slovenian Museum and Archives, Sankofa, and then Moduba. But our first application being read today is Africa House International. Their mission is to provide opportunities for people of all ages to learn about African culture through the arts, sustain their arts and culture, and build community through the arts. Africa House's early beginnings go back to 1996 when an influx of international African artists lived and worked at, the, at Karimi Mackey's residence-based guest artist program. The building became known as the Art House on the East Side. In 2009, Africa House International was incorporated as a nonprofit in Dr. Willie R. Mackey's honor. This gra grassroots learning center is dedicated to promoting STEAM through Africa House International Arts and Culture, solar, outdoor education, and prevention programming. The lead reader for this application is Jermaine Smith. Good afternoon, Africa House. Um, I first want to say that, of course, my role here is to review your application um, and what was presented in the application and not the work of Africa House um, in and of itself. Um, so I just wanted to say that because that is, that is the feedback I'm going to give. Um, looking at your public benefit, I rated you as good. Um, and that is because I just wanted a little bit more demographics um, in regards to just who you are serving, who are the local international artists um, that you bring over, kind of what countries do they represent. I think this is an opportunity for you all to use this as a storytelling apparatus. I know this is a grant application and there's a lot of things that come with that, but tell us the story. You are doing marvelous work. And I just wanted to see that more reflected in your application. So that is attached to what I said a little bit earlier. Um, so I want to see more of that. Um, some specific kind of feedback in your public benefit too is um, there's one section where you reference um, kind of also serving people with special needs. And I just wanted to highlight that as a consideration for your language. Um, me reading that, it felt a little othering um, for people with special needs because it was kind of like, and we also. So I just want you to think about how you include um, everyone and what you're talking about in your public benefit. Um, you highlighted traditional clothing um, as something that the organization does. Again, I wanted to know more about that. So why is that important to you all? Um, why did you mention that? You know, we want to understand that. Again, use this to tell the story. And in regards to telling story, you use the term or the title Grio. Um, and I know what that means. And then maybe my other panelists know what that means, but other folks may not know what it means. And so when you're using certain terms, we just ask that you define those. Um, because again, we're reading these applications as outsiders. So explain all the things is basically what I'm saying. So um, I do feel like you did do a great overview of your programs, but I did want to learn more about the STEAM 
um, programming that you did, kind of like really connecting the dots for us, because that is something that you mentioned in your mission. And so I just felt that was a little bit, um, there was a little bit missing from there. Um, in regards to your artistic and cultural vibrancy, also rated you as good. Um, I thought you, again, did a great overview of your programs. Um, the art forms, the example of the connections that you have, that was really good um, to read. Um, of course, thank you for pointing out the impact of COVID on your programming and things of that sort. We know that's the reality that we live in. Um, really appreciated that you acknowledge how important it is to compensate um, your artists and those that you are working with. Um, and also how you, um, gave an example about folks that they would rather stay in their community to do work. Um, the African World Festival is a great example of collaboration, um, building on your strengths and also highlighting the legacy of Dr. Mackey. Um, I really thought your supplemental material here um, was excellent in regards to highlighting the person who chose to hold um, their birthday party in the space and utilize your programming. Again, when I'm talking about telling us the story, that was an, a perfect um, example of the impact of your organization and your programming on the community. Um, for your organizational capacity, again, rated you good. Um, it's great to see that you use your community to recruit staff and board members and things of that sort. So that collaboration with your community, um, love that your board meets regularly, things of that sort. Um, I would want to know more about who or what comprises the internal and external resources that you referenced um, to get input um, into the organization to develop plans, um, specifically how feedback from your community is obtained. What does that look like? Give us a little bit more detail. Um, something I did notice, and this is something for you to know, is that um, in the checklist of things, you check yes, that there are staff and board members who are related. Um, so I, I, this is something to note because there's checks and balances, different things like that. And so maybe in the comment section under that, just give a little bit of an explanation of what or who um, that is and the dynamics at play there. Um, also love that you have succession planning and professional development. And the last thing I'll say is for your goals um, to really use the Smarty goal format um, and make sure that your goals and your measurements are connected. So you talked about different things as far as like the culinary arts, but you talked about bookkeeping records being monitored as the measurement. Give us more in relation to what the actual goals are. Thank you. Are there any new or differing comments from Marsha or Tyrone? And we can take a couple extra minutes here also. If okay. Um, hi. Um, I think I was um, in a similar place with uh, public benefit um, for this organization. But I do, I did have a different perspective on the, um, the video that was presented in terms of cultural vibrancy. It gave me a very deep sense of the love and the sense of family that existed within this organization. But I saw very little of the artistic um, uh, um, vibrancy. Uh, there was a small piece of it where there was some dancing and drumming. And I wanted to see the work and um, that this organization does more fully. That would have been helpful to me. And in terms of um, the organizational capacity, um, I just want to say that developing budgets is really hard. Um, and there's some really good templates out there. I found the budget very hard to read and I wasn't sure I fully understood it um, the way it was structured and it wasn't structured as like a traditional budget. Um, I also believe that there might be an error with the cultural data project and um, this is something that can be a flag for other funders. And so I think it's really important to get some support on this. And I think they give support, but the cultural 
data projects showed that you had no cash on hand. Um, but the 990 that you submitted shows that you actually did have money in the bank. Um, and so you want, if you have money in the bank, you want people to know that, um, you know, uh, so, so those, those are my additional comments. Um, so I probably, I rated, um, the organizational capacity as fair, um, because of those things. Thank you. Tyrone, anything else? Uh, no, uh, pretty much everything has been pretty much covered. Uh, so I don't really want to add too much more. But one thing I would just like to point out to the applicant that um, it is particularly under when it was under artistic and cultural vibrancy, when the question was asked what current programs that you're doing or, or recent past that was impactful. Um, it talked about a lot of programs that did not actually occur, which actually sounded really good, but it would have been very helpful to hear about a program that did actually occur that you could have highlighted. Um, it would have been helpful for, for me, you know, and I think other readers in regards to just basically addressing the specific question that was there. The information that provided was good, but um, it really didn't quite address the question that was asked in regards to discussing a program that actually did occur. So just want to caution the applicant, you know, to really make sure that they fully address the question, because that could be a, a situation with other, other reviewers. Thank you. There are no additional comments at this time. Panelists can go ahead and submit their scores. Our next application up will be for the Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers. The mission of the Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers is to preserve and perpetuate the art of Black storytelling through the African oral tradition. The Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers was founded November 18, 1995 by Barbara Eady, Wanda Owens, and Lucinda Stevens. CABS founders believe stories that depicted African-American history, culture, and traditions were vital and should be formally presented in Northeast Ohio. Their founders created a formal association that continues to communicate all aspects of African and African-American culture. The lead reader for this application is Marsha Feston. Hi. Um... I enjoyed reading this application and I'm gonna jump in with what my scores were against the um, criteria. I rated the organization as strong in terms of public benefit, but I will say that the answers that the applicant provided to the questions were very minimal. They were very short. I would have loved some examples of what are the stories that they're telling? Who comes? Who are the primary audiences? Who are the secondary audiences? How do they, how do people find the storytellers and bring them to their community center or their school? Um, there were just a lot of details that would have really made the reading and understanding of the organization um, much richer. Um, I rated um, in terms of artistic uh, and cultural vibrancy, I rated the organization as strong as well. Um, I love that you're thinking about how to engage youth and adding some contemporary ways that youth wanna hear stories, including rap, music, visual arts. Um, it did make me wonder um, and I would have loved to have known more about this. Who are the storytellers? How are they trained? How do you groom young storytellers to join your organization? And how does the organization have to change to incorporate another generation of storytellers? That detail would have given me a better sense of kind of what the 
opportunities and challenges are for the organization as it thinks about young people and the next generation, which seem to be an important part of the um, narrative. Um, in terms of organizational capacity, I gave um, the organization a fair rating. So one thing I want to applaud is this practice of planning each year, strategic planning at the beginning of the year built into your board meetings. Um, there, you mentioned that you wanted to increase board membership um, and that you had a recruitment plan. A sentence or two more on that would have helped. But I think the things that um, kind of caught my attention were that um, you check that you don't regularly update cash flow, pro flow projections. And um, I know you have a very small budget, but knowing where you are will really help you. Um, and similarly, um, I think as I read the budget that you submitted for the coming year, the current year, it looked like the expenses were twice the amount of the revenue. And I was really curious about that. And the only revenue line was like membership. And um, a budget note might have been helpful saying, we are also applying for 20 grants or if we don't meet our revenue, if we don't have enough revenue to meet our expenses, here's what our plan is. So that um, I would have understood better how you're going to um, organize your year. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there, thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Any new or differing comments from Tyrone or LaShonda? Uh, no, uh, actually Marcia hit basically all the points that I, I had down in my notes. Uh, so don't want to rehash a lot of them, but I, I think that just to reiterate, I think that just taking a little bit more opportunity to really go into a little bit more detail, this is your opportunity to tell your story. I mean, I think if, oh, some of these people are gonna, some of the grantees are gonna hear this a lot through the day, but tell your story. A lot of us don't come from this area. So we're really interested in learning more about you and what you do. So by being able to take this opportunity to really go into detail and explain your story and toot your own horn, I think would have been very helpful to provide us who are looking inside from the outside to provide a better understanding about who and what you do. Um, so just as a, a, a note on that. Um, so just looking at it, under public benefit, um, I provided them with a, a good score. Um, for artistic, it was good. And also under um, organizational capacity, it was fair. So I just have a few other things to add. This is LaShonda Crowstorm. Um, I think the intergenerational aspect of your work is crucial. Um, and I really like that because as we look at many art uh, spaces that there's massive disconnects and um, the ways in which the arts can bridge those gaps are extremely important. And, and the fact that it's really centered in your work makes it even more important. Um, when we're looking at uh, the role of media as it impacts black and brown children, uh, having different counter narratives and different ways to express themselves is even more crucial um, for mental and emotional health for their uh, soul total growth. So I, I really commend you for that. Uh, when I look at things, I really see you almost like a volunteer organization with a very lean and mean budget. Uh, so I, I do like the fact that I see that you have tried to build a uh, a structure that allows you to function with the succession process, because as we know, lots of organizations might have that one person everyone loves, and when the person's gone, the organization's gone too. So I actually like that you have looked at how do you build out a structure that allows uh, people to unwrap and off-ramp without taking down the whole organization at once. I, I do, as you move forward, 
want to definitely see how you can, as you uh, look at how to secure additional funding as your organizational capacity increases, that you also look to how do we ensure that we can pay the artists who are doing this work, um, if not what they're worth, because uh, artists, you know, we can never be paid what we're worth, but at least pay them in a way that uh, makes sense for what the industry expects. Um, and I do understand as your budget grows that you'll be able to accommodate some of that, but continue to focus on how do we uh, strengthen the community, the capacity, and again, strengthen uh, the work around the intergenerational. With that being said, uh, I've got to toggle back and forth because I'm on a small screen here. Uh, I did give you exceptional uh, for the, uh, What's the official category? Sorry, let me scroll my sheet. Uh, public benefit uh, for artistic vibrancy. I, I did give you exceptional. Again, I would have really liked to see more, uh, more, more examples. I, I love the one that I saw, but I would have liked to see more uh, examples of the storytelling, how it's presented. And for the organizational capacity, let me, sorry, I lost you on my screen. Um, I was able to, I, I gave you a fair because I do recognize you're, you're still continuing to grow. Thank you. If there are no additional comments at this time, panelists can go ahead and submit their scores. Our next application here is Japo Cultural Arts Institute. Their mission is to preserve and perpetuate the African aesthetic and its influence on world cultures through art, music, dance, history, and folklore by providing sensory connections to history and tradition, leading deeper into issues of spirituality, community, responsibility, and liberation. Considered one of the premier cultural arts organizations in Ohio, Japo Cultural Arts is a professional dance and performing arts company comprised of talented artists from around the world. Founded in 2009, artistic director Talise A. Campbell, Japo Cultural Arts has touched over 30,000 people through performances, school assemblies, residencies, and workshops. Thousands more have enjoyed Japo's artistry at their annual drum and dance conference and concert every June. The lead reader for this application is Tyrone Spann. Yes, um, under the public benefit um, section, I graded the organization with a strong score. Um, the organization provided details regarding the population that they served along with how their program programming is generated towards serving this population, which was very good information. The author was also able to explain some of the activities they operate to bring authentic experiences to the participants, both locally and abroad. It would, it would have been helpful for me, and I think for other readers, if they would have provided a little bit more details regarding the types of activities that they participate in when they do travel to other countries. Um, it, I think they would have brought a little bit more structure to and a little more depth to what they were actually uh, providing for these opportunities to go abroad. Uh, the descriptions they provided regarding how they develop meaningful relationships with the BIPOC populations was very informative. I would have been interested in learning more about how they do outreach to individuals and families who may not already be familiar with the organization and try to encourage them to be more engaged with their activities. Under the artists and cultural section, I graded them with a strong score. Uh, the organization presented a good example of the highlight of highlighted recent work that addressed the, the question that was asked. Uh, because of the uniqueness of the partnership with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I would have been curious to know, hear a little bit more about if they're going to be able to continue this relationship with, with, the, with the Hall of Fame and how this actually came about because of, because of the uniqueness of this, of this partnership. Uh, the other, uh, other, otherwise, uh, the organization did a good job in drawing out and, and discussing their plans for the next year, for the next two years. They also provided a good summary addressing the question in regards to how they engage the artists 
and their professionals to develop their programming. In regards to organizational capacity, I graded the organization with a strong score as well. Um, one of the questions that, I, one of the things I did note that it would have been helpful if the writer would have provided more details regarding their staff and volunteer recruitment and organizational uh, plans. The answer, the answer is some of the presence of ways, um, I'm sorry, reading my notes here. Uh, Yes, and I think that they, they provided a lot more details than some of the other sections that they provided. So it would have been nice to uh, provide a little bit, the same level of detail in, in this one. Uh, in addressing their financial status, uh, the answer did address the question, however, it would have been helpful to know what new strategies they are planning to enact to attract these new uh, funding sources. Uh, again, they're looking at trying to really get uh, they indicate that they're trying to raise their dollar amounts a little bit more than they were in the past. So it would have been interesting to hear a little bit more about their strategies. And overall, their cultural heritage goals that they listed, uh, I think were very sound and the measurables that they related to that were very reasonable and being able to really get a, grid, a good gauge in regards to what they were going to uh, measure. So overall, the support documents and support links as far as the YouTubes and the, the, um, the purchase were also very helpful in providing a, a more deeper understanding as far as like who they, who they are and what they do. Thank you. Any new or different comments from LaShonda or Jermaine? Um, I have a couple just to build on. Uh, and I agree with everything. I just want to encourage the writer to, to be mindful. Um, in the section, uh, I think it's really important that we find ways to connect the African diaspora and all the various uh, ways in which that manifests. Um, but it says all of our instruction is geared towards this population and bringing African culture to the forefront so the population can begin to have a sense of pride in themselves. And I would, uh, while I do not think the intent was to imply this, that that does kind of have an undercurrent that somehow if you're not connected to African society, that there is not a rich cultural traditions that live in the African American community. And we, we need to just be really mindful of what that states, because then that can become things like if I'm all down with hip hop and not necessarily with Yoruba chanting, that something's off with me. And I don't really think that's your intention, but I think that you should be very mindful um, that that variety of culture as we connected is really complex and beautiful and deep and made more complex by uh, these histories and uh, what happens when cultures have forced mishmash. Uh, with that being said, I, I still graded your uh, culture as 40 uh, public benefit as exceptional as well as the artistic has been uh, as uh, exceptional. Um, I did have a question because uh, as you talk about how you expand it, that does that also start to begin to include handicrafts. So if we are doing the dancing um, within these cultural traditions, the making of the costumes and things have their own and the creation of textiles have their own rich cultural traditions that are attached to it. And as you think about building your capacity and your programming, is that another direction that you think about to uh, build those connections and also build those understandings of the artworks uh, because the performing and the visual are integrated and go hand in hand within that context. I would say in regards to looking at uh, some of the aspects around organizational, uh, I gave you a good, but I do want to see um, there start to be looking at what is your succession plan and that that as you move start the strategic planning process that really look at how do we build capacity, but also how do we build on an actual official succession plan in that. Um, and I would encourage you, uh, you definitely have lots of ways where you get in feedback, but not just the bricks and sticks numbers, but creating some opportunities beyond survey to get some qualitative feedback so that as your programming grows, you may find an entirely new audience that gets connected if those questions about, hey, 
what makes this experience work for you and how can we make it better and having maybe some focus groups um, to continue to help expand your programming and your capacity into audiences. You know, like people like me, I'm beyond not performing. That is not my world. But if you had some textiles things, I'd be all over there with you because that's how I connect. So those are just uh, the little comments I want to add. Thank you. Jermaine, anything else you'd like to add? I'm really quickly kind of just seconding everything that my previous panelists um, said. I rated this prod, this org um, application strong across the board. I do want to point out um, that in the public benefit section, um, you, you talked about bridging East and West together. And I always say, if you mention it, just be prepared to add a little bit more information. Um, from my work with CAC, I've begun to understand some of the dynamics between communities and things like that in Cleveland. Um, so I have a little bit of context to it, but I would want to see more because that is a true public benefit if you are um, bridging these two communities together. What does that look like? How is your work doing that? And is this now part of kind of like your plan and moving it forward? And I also just want to um, encourage you in regards to using language like it is evident in all our community arts programming that you're doing X, Y, Z. I would say maybe not use language like that because again, as someone from the outside and reviewing, it is not evident to us. And so part of it is you telling the story and making it evident to us, not stating that it is. Um, and... Yes, I think that is it. Thank you. If there are no other, oh, sorry. Uh, if there are no other comments, panelists can go ahead and submit their scores as we get ready for our next application, Duffy Liturgical Dance Ensemble. We are going to start allowing a little extra time for each review because we're getting into some good meaty conversation here. But um, also, if panelists are able to keep their comments focused, that will help us keep things moving along also. But no, there's a lot to cover here <laughs> as we go through. So uh, the mission of Duffy Liturgical Dance Ensemble is to research, preserve, and perform the American Negro spiritual. Their goal is to improve the quality of life through performance of the spiritual and application to everyday life of its universal message of faith, hope, optimism, and perseverance. They offer classes, workshops, lecture demonstrations, and performances that engage the mind, discipline the body, and develop the talents of people of all ages. The lead reader for this application is LaShonda Crowstorm. Thank you. I think, uh, so in regards to a public benefit, exceptional, uh, this work is extremely important in order for us to provide a true understanding of American history and the arts play an important role and supporting communities of that have been historically been oppressed uh, as a vehicle to talk about their stories, preserve their stories, as well as uh, become teachable. Um, I like that you focus a lot on connecting youth with their families, uh, because as we think about hip hop, students have to learn the history of how hip hop is really the new iteration of the Negro spiritual and taking those historical art forms and bringing them forward to the youth is so important. And I love that you not only just center the youth, but you bring their families in because sometimes uh, our version of intergenerational is that here's the, here's the instructor who's older and here's the youth and you actually bridge all of it. It's the youth and their families, which are what are the backbones of our community and ensure that our cultural traditions begin to survive and move forward. So I really like um, that the youth are the center of the work. Um, I like that you're moving forward. We're trying uh, starting to have dialogues uh, well, organizations uh, that are headed by non-African-Americans that serve uh, African-Americans and that you have 
done the base training with CAC around uh, anti-racism work so that you can better go out into that community and be able to ask the hard questions and also be able to guide the community forward to uh, the work that becomes multi-year, not just one project. I am curious though, that as you have, and I say this as someone who runs race dialogues um, for years, that uh, I wanted to just see a little more about what is your next step if something surfaces that's really difficult in those dialogues and you're not really in a position to just walk away at the end of our three or four sessions, that just really think about, and I know that, that the application space not may not be enough to really dive into that because that's like a whole plan, but to really just kind of talk about it. And if you haven't talked about it, start thinking about like, what is our follow-up in regards to, uh, especially because you've done the work uh, with groundwater, what is our accountability to the work of transformation? If we're gonna have the courage to dive into race, then you have to uh, look at the long walk journey. And I just really like a sentence or two um, about that. Um, I would have, I gave you a good mark for um, artist and vibrancy because I just would have liked to see more. Um, we got a little like drop in the bucket and I just wanted to see more. You talked about the Negro spirituals. I really was, I was like, oh, we're going to get some spirituals when I hit this link. And I would have really liked to see uh, more of that so I could really see what does that look like when you say the intergenerational are doing and what does it look like that? I would have just liked to see more. Um, and my final on organizational capacity is, is, is I actually did give you exceptional because you are in the middle of developing not only your succession plan, but your strategic plan that you understand that you were founded by an individual, it's grown and now it's time to ensure that the organization can survive. And the only way the organization can survive and continue the good work is to have that succession plan and the strategic plan and you're in the middle of that. And I love the fact that you are thinking about, I don't know what respectable wage means because that's a lot of things for artists, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't mean you just ask them for, to do all this work for $50. So I'm happy to see that you're thinking about the economic impact you make on the artists because then that impacts your community and you're thinking about the longevity of the organization. Those are my comments. Thank you. Any new or differing comments from Jermaine or Marsha? I would just um, echo um, uh, the comments that we heard um, uh, for public benefit. I rated this organization as exceptional. I rated it as exceptional uh, for artistic and cultural vibrancy. There are so many places that people, young, old, middle-aged uh, can plug into this work. Um, and I like that they're going out into communities. Um, I agree, I, I, I had in my notes, do they have a social worker? Um, so um, you're creating courageous conversations and those conversations have the potential to bring up lots of issues. Um, so just something to think about and I rated the um, organizational capacity as strong. <laughs> Sorry, there was an ambulance passing, <laughs> so I didn't want to unmute. <laughs> um, really quickly, um, I rated um, this application as strong across the board. So for all three categories, um, one thing I wanted, I, and I did that because I, again, just wanted to know a little bit more about certain things. So for example, in the public benefit um, section, you mentioned the, um, you know, the, the, the significant focus on children and also mentioned kind of like how really all of the children you're working with have been affected by some sort of violence or death um, and how the program is providing space. But I think that is a major, <laughs> that is a major event. So I think I just wanted to know more about what that looked like. What, what are some 
real examples of how you all are supporting these children through such a tough time in their lives. Um, you know, what kind of framework are you using? Are things trauma informed? Like different things of that sort, I think I wanted to see a little bit more of. Um, I also wanted to know um, in the work that you plan to do with orgs who are headed by non um, African American folks serving African American people, which I, I love and ditto everything um, that LaShonda said about it. Um, but you have like kind of like with the spiritual as as the foundation, and I wanted to know how you are going to navigate um, different spiritual traditions that may come up from folks that you're currently serving or may serve. What does that look like in thinking about kind of the inclusion and diversity of um, things within the Black community and outside of it? So I just wanted to get that. And I also just wanted to give a great thumbs up in the forward thinking in regards to the secession planning um, for the organization, um, because right, you want it to maintain its work and maintain its impact on the community. So I'd love to see that. Um, just an investment that you're making into that work and thinking about increasing the budget. Um, I thought your goals were good, but also again, just highlight to use the Smarty format, just make them a little bit more measurable. Um, and that's all I needed to add. Thank you. If there are no additional comments, panelists can go ahead and submit their scores. And yeah, do you think it's okay if we go through the next two applications here before our break? And will that work with our panelists also? Okay. Our next application here is Faluke Cultural Arts. Their mission as Central Neighborhood's only art center is to make performing arts and arts education available to all, particularly those who lived in, live in quote unquote underserved areas. The programming of Faluke is family oriented with focus on at risk youth. The goal is to provide positive alternatives to negative behaviors by instilling discipline, self pride, and boosting self confidence through self expression and self discovery. The lead reader for this application is Jameen Smith. Good afternoon, Faluke. Um, so for Public benefit. Sorry, one second. Do, do, do. Navigating multiple screens. Um, Braided you are strong. Um, I really appreciated the demographic info of the community that you served um, and the detailed overview of your organizational history. I feel like the overview really helped um, your application as a whole, as it provided a really good snapshot of the investments that you've made. Um, into the organization and the community you served, um, from the creation of the Arts Link program that you mentioned to the recent engagement that you had with the consulting firm and piloting your scattered sites um, programming. Um, I did want to learn more about how you engage with the community directly. Um, I love that you have a lot of um, partnerships with like-minded organizations and organizations sharing um, similar mission and values. But I always want to see how you engage with the community. So that's again, obtaining community feedback, how you're implementing that feedback, different things of that sort. And I think I would have loved to see a little bit more of that in this section specifically. Um, for arts and cultural vibrancy, also rated um, this as strong. Um, so again, love the idea of scattered sites and doing that work and realizing that that is something um, that needed to happen, um, especially during this time and taking the time during COVID to really reassess your programming. I thought that was really awesome. Um, in this, you use an example about um, the chalk painting and the, and the spaceship piece of um, the work that the children did during the festival. And I love that the children were exposed to new art materials and given creative autonomy. But I wanted to know, again, more, like more about the impact on those projects. So these children using this new medium and creating this Black Lives Matter, 
you know, mural, which was beautiful in seeing it in your supplemental materials, but what was the impact? What did they say after it was done? What did that look like? Um, in regards to, you know, imagining they're on a spaceship, what was that like? What is that tied to in regards to your work? So again, use this to highlight your impact, maybe provide some direct quotes, different things of that sort. Um, and I love the um, the collaboration amongst your teaching artists um, and the impact that that's having on the students kind of witnessing that and that you've built that into your program for organizational capacity also rated you as strong again great use of partnerships. Um, there was a lot of emphasis on the partnerships and your professional affiliations, which again is really great and great investment, but again just wanted to see more about. Um, the community impact and again what the community is saying how are they benefiting from these partnerships give us more of that um i think you did a great overview of um talking about your income and the multiple revenue streams that you have um very happy to see that succession planning is included um, in your strategic planning process and that you are even involved in the strategic planning process um in regards to your goals um, again, use the Smarty Goal format as per the instructions on the application. Um, I thought that the goals were a bit broad. So, for example, one goal is our goal is to meaningfully, meaningfully engage our community to increase um, visibility, et cetera, et cetera. So define meaningful. What does that mean to and for you? Um, and quantify, you know, in these goals. Again, what are the number of events you attend? to lead to what percentage increase of visibility and things of that sort. Um, and in your, um, your board list, I really appreciated the extra detail of the terms of office and the note when folks' terms were ending. That was just something, honestly, I haven't seen a lot of in doing years of grant review. <laughs> and so I just really appreciated just knowing where the board was in their life cycle. So excellent that you have that going on. Thank you. Any new or different comments from Marsha or Tyrone? Um, I'll just jump in. Um, I rated for public benefit the organization as strong. Um, I really would have liked more of a description of the program. What happens when kids come to the center? What are they actually doing? Who are the teachers? Is it structured classes where you sign up for 10 weeks? Is it a drop-in? It didn't get a full robust sense of the organization. Um, and I would have liked that. Uh, it's clear that the executive director is really well connected with the social service infrastructure of the neighborhood. Um, and um, and I, I also uh, wondered um, similarly about the youth of voice and parents in, in programming and um, how, how they were incorporated and what, what was offered. Um, for artistic um, vibrancy and um, artistic and cultural vibrancy, I loved that um, the scattered site expansion to reach kids where they're at. And it sounds like there's some great partnerships emerging across artistic uh, artists and disciplines. Um, but uh, so I think really it was just understanding the basics of what is being offered to youth and who's offering it um, would be something that would enhance your proposal in the future. Uh, just very briefly, um, my other two colleagues did an excellent job in um, kind of answering and addressing a lot of the issues that I had. Um, just wanted to thank the uh, writer and the author of this grant for providing such a rich history of a background. So it helped me to have a, a better understanding in regards to who the organization is, their history, and how they came to where the work that they're doing now. So it made it easier for me to understand a lot of the things that they were talking about in the application is that there. So I want to commend the author for, for doing such a great job in that. Um, for all three sections, I 
I rated the, the organization exceptional in all three areas. The only thing that I would like to add that my colleagues did not jump uh, touch on a little bit was under the artistic area, I would have liked to have learned a little bit more about how they're planning on incorporating their future plans in with what they're currently doing and how that's going to enhance their work moving forward. So it, it had just been helpful for me to learn a little bit more about that. But overall, I think that the author did a very good job as far as like explaining what they were planning on doing. Thank you. If there are no other comments, panelists can go ahead and submit their scores. And then I will turn it over to Julia to chair the remainder of panel. Thanks, Heather. So it sounds like we will do one more review. Our next one up is Greater Cle Cleveland Urban Film Foundation um, before we take a short break. So we'll do this one and then we'll get a little break in before finishing up. So the mission of the Greater Cleveland Urban Film Foundation, GCUFF or GCUF, is to enrich black culture through cinema. They connect communities in reflecting on history, celebrating and sharing the richness of the African diaspora by providing an educational platform and showcase for filmmakers. GCUF was established in 2012 as a grassroots organization to create a platform to highlight films, filmmakers, actors, and other industry executives from the African diaspora and expose their work to the diverse audience of greater Cleveland. GCUF is dedicated to increasing awareness and dialogue around important issues and stories from their communities while offering educational opportunities to encourage and inspire individuals interested in pursuing a career in the film industry. So the lead reader for this one is Marsha. Okay. Um, in terms of public benefit, I rated this organization as exceptional. It developed a nice set of, it has a nice set of partnerships um, that have been expanding its visibility. They're using film to spark conversations and they have a clear focus and niche that's adding richness to the film festival and film community um, uh, circuits. Uh, hold on, sorry. I also sometimes have to trouble scrolling down. Um, in terms of artistic and cultural vibrancy, I also rated them as exceptional. They work, their work with students goes beyond just teaching film in a classroom to working with actors or crews, um, an original film directed by experienced filmmakers, which is something that very few young people have the opportunity to do. And for the older kids that they work with, this year-long immersive experience in all aspects of film production, they really appreciated um, that they offer that depth of experience. It will also say that um, it was really intrigued by the screening of films regularly at small Black-owned businesses. Um, and I would have loved to have heard just curious, like, do you get a different audience? Um, does the audience who comes to these um, monthly screenings also go to the major film festival? But in general, um, I appreciated that they were trying to reduce barriers and cost um, for people to see films uh, by and about um, black, by black filmmakers uh, about black people. Um, uh, in terms of organizational capacity, I also gave it an exceptional. Um, the, uh, the executive director is part of this uh, cultural leaders um, effort that shares best practices. They have a st new strategic plan in place. It was one of the few proposals that I read that had measurable goals so I could understand the scope of what was happening, for example, producing for community screenings outside of the neighborhood. And the financials were very clear. Is that the end of your comments? Okay. Yes. Okay. Are there any uh, differing or new comments from Tyrone or LaShonda? Um, 
Well, I just wanted to indicate as well that it was very helpful to have such a detailed uh, history and background because it did provide more context in regards to the work that they were doing. Uh, on the public benefit, I did great organiza organization as a strong. Um, couple things. Uh, I would have been interested to if they were if they could provide like a cultural racial percentage breakdown of the audiences like they did with the others because they did do a good job in providing some other percentages. So I'm just curious if they have that data and if they did, uh, it'd be nice to provide it. Um, also, does the organization attempt to partner with other art programs in the in uh, the North, Northern Ohio area to help assist them in providing some racial diversity in regards to that? It, it would have been helpful in regards to hearing that information. Um, and also all the partnerships that they've listed, um, are you continuing to grow these partnerships and build them or are you actively seeking to create new relationships? Because it seems like you have a really good base in regards to what you indicated there. But it's curious if you're looking at uh, how, or how are you going to go about creating new partnerships so you can expand your base in regards to that. Um, in regards to artistic and cultural, I also graded them strong. There's nothing in addition that I need to add in that area. And under organization capacity, um, I graded the organization as exceptional. Um, it says it was the supplemental information that they did provide was very helpful uh, in regards to, again, getting a, a better picture and sense of, of who they are and what they do. It was very much appreciated. Uh, I would have liked to have known if they are looking at possibly looking at trying to mentor younger artists in the field to kind of help to create that next generation of filmmakers uh, because they're, they're really concentrating on trying to cultivate this. So I'm just curious if they're also looking at trying to provide a mentoring program as well so that the work that they're establishing now will be able to be perpetuated moving forward. Um, and that's pretty much, oh, the other, other thing that I would have, it would have been nice to have seen a copy of the strategic plan because they did reference it a couple of times in their application. So it would have been nice to have that as far as like uh, some additional information to see and learn about. Um, the only thing I, am I on? Oh, okay. The only thing I really have to offer to all of that is that I think is the work you're doing is really important to ensure there's counter narratives. Um, I really love that at every single level, you are thinking about the totality of how the arts exists, that you're thinking about the ways in which the arts impact our communities. So you're working with small businesses in your communities as well. So it's just not about the, the filming, but it's also about how the film can impact that coffee house and all of these. And that's so crucial um, for folks to see how the arts are integrated throughout. Um, I would say that the other thing that I would highlight is that I, I like your board, but I almost feel like it's business or arts and you're operating as a nonprofit. So I think maybe reaching out into some other industries. So as you think about your strategic goals, as you think about how you grow your capacity and all those things that other nonprofits might provide you a different way of thinking about that, where a business solution from the business world doesn't always translate well in the arts industry or directly into the community realm. So making sure that you have a, a voice of someone who's like, wait, wait a minute, uh, on there would be helpful in my view. Uh, and, and if you've been on this call, you know I'm gonna say, I would like to see a succession plan because I wanna one day be able to come up to this film festival. And the only way to ensure we can do this for years on end is to ensure there is a way forward in the event that something happens. That's just the reality. Um, and one final thing is I would encourage uh, that, look at some of the work of Theester Gates in Chicago with the Rebuild Foundation and the Black Cinema House. Um, because as you think about how you go out into neighborhoods and take the films into communities that can't necessarily come to you, he's got a really good example of how they were able to make a, a, a basically a Black cinema in the middle of a house and how that continued to grow and grow. But the Esther Gates in Chicago, Black Cinema House Rebuilt Foundation. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Panelists can go ahead and submit their scores.
Um, we will go ahead and take a short break here. Um, India, maybe you can put up a timer on the screen so we can uh, keep an eye on how much time we've got here, but panelists can go ahead and turn off their cameras. I think we'll take 10 minutes right now. Just step away for a minute so that we can come back refreshed. Our next application is Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center, and that's where we'll pick up uh, in just a few minutes.
I'm not sure if anyone can hear right now, but I just switched the timer over to my screen. I think India's might have been frozen, or maybe that was frozen on my end. Either way, we've got five minutes.
All right, we'll give everyone just a second to hop back in here. Let me reorganize my screens. All right, so our next organization is Julia de Borgos Cultural Arts Center. Julia de Borgos Cultural Arts Center, uh, their mission is to transform lives by preserving, educating, and promoting Latino heritage through the teaching and practice of history, cultural, the visual, performing, and literary arts. Julia de Borgos was founded in 1989 by Daisy Rivera and the combined efforts of the Cultural Educational Institute for Boricua Advancement and the Hispanic Parents Union. These organizations united to realize a long-term dream of establishing a family-oriented center to serve the Latino youth and their families through programs and activities designed to foster cultural pride and art appreciation. So Tyrone is the lead reader for this one, so take it away. Okay. Um, once again, I'd like to uh, thank the author for providing a good overview. Again, as a person who doesn't live in northern Ohio, Northeast Ohio, this was a very helpful to get some context uh, in regards to who they are and what they do. Um, so I gave uh, more understanding as far as like reading the rest of the application. In regards to their public benefit, I did grade the organization as with a strong score. Um, the author was able to describe the makeup of the York community that the organization serves very well. They also explained that the organization is currently re-examining the types of programming that they're offering going forward with the understanding that they are going to be expanding the cultural offerings to be more in inclusive of the broader Latinx community beyond their initial focus around the Puerto Rican community. Um, so it would have been helpful if they would have gave a little bit more context in regards to why they felt that it was necessary to make this adjustment and what were the leading causes for this. Um, while it, while it's very noble, it, it, it would, because they're introducing this, it would have been helpful to provide more context as to why the organization is making this adjustment. Um, the I, I felt that the author really didn't provide enough details in regards to examining how the organization goes about building relationships. They talk about the relationships they have, but they really didn't explain how they go about building these relationships. Um, but so it would have been helpful to get that information. Uh, but they did provide a very good summary in regards to the activities they offer, but did not really, in my opinion, address how they're going to bring people together by utilizing these programs. So they've been a little bit helpful for some context. There's a, there's a purpose for not only the switch to, to open the doors to a broader Latinx community. Um, so they've been helpful to get that context uh, for that. In regards to artistic uh, cultural vibrancy, I provide them with an ex excellent, exceptional score, excuse me. Um, they did provide a very good job in regards to addressing the highlighted programs that they are recently done along with their plans for the next two years. So I felt that I, I had a good understanding as far as like what they've done and how they're planning on moving forward for the next two years. They also appear to have a very good methodology in regards to engaging artists to be engaged with the work that they provide at the center. Uh, under organizational capacity, I also provide them with an exceptional score. Uh, the author did a good job in describing how they go about recruiting a diverse staff volunteers and along with uh, how, explaining how the board interacts with their ED. So that was helpful in regards to giving that context. So it, I felt that they did a good job in addressing that particular question on the application. They also, also provide a very detailed summary of how their leadership goes about developing uh, their work plan for the year. So that was very helpful in regards to providing that, that background and structure. And the organization appears to have a very strong system in place to address their fiscal needs. Based upon the information provided, I would have liked to have seen how they plan on seeking to either uh, uh, approach those organizations that did provide additional funds during the pandemic cycle? Uh, are they planning on asking them for those same levels of dollars or are they looking at 
for the plan that they're they're in, engaging in regards to getting new funders, is this something that they're planning on replacing those um, over over top dollars that they receive because of the pandemic? Just a little bit of clarity in regards to that. I also wanted to thank the author for providing comments at the end of the organizational capacity assessment. They did provide a little bit more detail in regards to some of the questions, some of the answers that they provided. So that, that was very good. And also along with this fact that they provided some very good supplemental um, e, uh, materials that provided more, more, uh, uh, more background and more understanding as far as like, the work they do and how they go about doing it. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from LaShonda or Jermaine on this one? I'm looking for them, so, sorry. <laughs> um, I, so I gave for exceptional um, for the first two categories and, and, and good for the last. Uh, I'm going to start with the last because that's where uh, most of my attention was drawn. Uh, was because the the gifting of the building and really want to. Uh, so this is organizational capacity. I'll just make note of that. So oh, I'm sorry, organizational capacity. Um, because with the gifting of the building comes a, a different level of, of financial needs and just want to make sure that as you uh, take on this building and start to really turn it into, if what I saw as an example, I, I'll be up to visit myself one day, but really wanna make sure that uh, you start looking at how to do capital investment planning for the fact that you now have this building and what are the uh, resources uh, and new resources that'll need to be looked at for the caretaking of, of an actual structure. Um, and again, definitely going back to looking at that succession planning, which as you look at the development of the building uh, and all the programming that goes with it, uh, that succession planning also includes what does that mean for the maintenance of the building over time? Because now you have a capital improvement project that will have to be maintained. Uh, and it's fabulous that you were able to get it. I would also, uh, now I'm backing up, uh, I lost my place. I, I, again, I had that kind of same question about why did, why did you feel the need to move away from uh, just focusing on Puerto Rican culture? That was fine. Uh, that perhaps, it, and there may just be a neighborhood demographic shift, but just a little, little little just a little info on that because i found that very curious uh, but as you dive into these other cultures i did see that you have variety because uh, latin america and latinx is complex but wanted to ensure that that also doesn't forget to include those stories of uh, the afro latinx experience and the indigenous experience and that it's not just the mainstream cultures that people get associated with but those that also help build those cultures and, and that perhaps that is more than just beyond. Um, I think this is the one where they were talking about the Arisha and they were showing the dancing and things, but it also becomes classes because that's how things get suited, uh, situated beyond just the exhibition factor, but they become classes as you do that work of expansion around the cultures. And I love seeing the variety. You had music, theater, you had drumming, you had visual, and that is the culture. It's not one thing. It's all those pieces of the, uh, the culture. Thank you. Anything else for Julia de Burgos? Good. All right, panelists can go ahead and submit their scores on that one. Next up is Latinus Theater Experience Company Incorporated. So Latin Us, their mission is to create a Hispanic multicultural theater and arts center for those pursuing artistic excellence, provide a workspace that honors tradition while also allowing artists to express themselves and contribute to the progression of the culture of Ohio by involving the community in the development and conservation of arts and culture. Latin Us Theater Company was formed around four years ago by a group of concerned Hispanic leaders from di different Latin countries with a common goal, 
passion for the arts and culture and strong desire to improve the Hispanic community in the Clark Fulton neighborhood area using theater as the medium. During their short life, they have been able to present five artistic productions. Their latest achievement was the opportunity to lease their own black box theater at the new Pivot Center. So LaShonda is the lead reader for this one. Let me get back to my notes real quick. For the first two capacity, uh, two uh, public benefit and artistic, uh, public benefit is uh, exceptional and uh, artistic capacity, culture and cultural vibrancy is strong. Uh, I, 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 I think just one of the things to keep in mind, uh, I love the grassroots nature of this and that you were able to move so fast and furious so fast uh, to build it out. But that also becomes that place where it's the double-edged sword that we've been able to grow so fast. So right now, as you're growing, really building up that infrastructure to uh, around capacity, around succession planning, around you have this space now, that that becomes even more crucial to maintain the growth. Or it could be the things that you grow so fast, but every the other aspects of it can't keep up and it becomes the thing that makes you teeter. So I would just uh, be really mindful of that. And that takes me to the last one, uh, which was a concern, which was around the board with organizational capacity. That kind of was a flag for me. Uh, you've moved so fast, so I recognize that. Uh, and it takes us time to catch up, but as you be continue, uh, there definitely needs to be a thought about the succession planning and broadening the depth of your board because we have folks who are related to each other. And what does that mean? What do those relationships look like? Uh, what is someone over someone else who's um, the board is over folks who are being paid? That these are all things that uh, another funder may view as a flag. And so I recognize that you've just grown so fast uh, that sometimes you just bring who, who you got with you along, but we're at the point now that you're growing and to maintain that growth and the great works that you can do in community, we have to start going a little deeper and broader and bringing community in. With that being said, now I'm, I'm probably all over the place, sorry. <laughs> this is just how my mind works. Uh, that I think it's really important that when we talk about these terms because of how community impacts them, what is Latin versus what is Hispanic? Because that means if you use the word Hispanic, then does that leave out folks who may be Brazilian who want to come into the space? And so those are things to just think about as you begin to think about what does it mean to be a community partner? What does it mean to be an entity in your neighborhoods and community? What are you serving and what do the words you put out? How do they create barriers or how do they create space for people to come in? With that being said, uh, when we move over and look at artistic vibrancy, um, I did want to ensure that uh, as you explore these stories, the Hispanic and Latinx community, because those are the two terms that were used. Um, I hope that you again will dive into the complexity of those identities of the Afro Latinx experience, what that means when we see uh, English speaking Caribbeans then relocate to the Panama and how that impacts the culture that the indigenous cultures that are all from North America to Argentina, that those are also there that as you do this work, you do the hard work too, that you're willing to talk about the impact of colonialism and enslavement, but also the fun parts, uh, because that's how, our, uh, and theater has a way of embodying the arts in a way that other things can't. So those are just my uh, comments in general. Um. Absolute ditto to everything that LaShonda just shared. And thank you for highlighting the moment that Latin us appears to be in um, with its growth. Um, I rated for public benefit, also rated as exceptional, um, artistic strong and or organizational capacity strong. I will say this is an application where kind of like the passion 
and the fire and the commitment really came through. Um, I could tell that you all the group of folks who truly believe in this work and really started this work with a really keen sense of purpose um, and that you are committed to the growth of the organization and making sure that um, the representation in the arts for folks in your community specifically and folks in the Latin community in general is there. Um, I thought you gave an excellent detailed overview. Um, again, it was clear your commitment, passion, and purpose, meaning your why really came through. Um, the knowledge of your community and the lived experience of those in your community um, was great. I appreciated even the kind of reference to folks who may have come in due to Hurricane Maria um, and that you were waiting for the census to kind of confirm that. Um, but in that also, of course, that is great to have that data, but also encourage you to continue to trust your own community engagement efforts. And if this is what you're seeing, that is what you're seeing and hearing. Um, little things, honestly, thanks for citing your source um, in reference to um, kind of the line about art as catalyst for creation of social capital and things of that sort. There's little things that I just like to, to, to say um, and feedback. Um, I would love again to see some more direct quotes from folks like in the application. Um, you know, what have folks have, what, what did folks say in regards to the importance of having Latino cultural representation in the arts that you referenced? Um, I love that your actors and a lot of staff and everyone is from the community and representative of the community. Um, and so I think that's all I will say, because again, I feel like LaShonda covered all the things. I think with this moment of looking at this fast growth and what you've already done, don't lose the fire that you have. Don't think that it has to be done in a certain way. There are things that you need to think about in regards to succession planning and all of that, but continue to use the fire that you have to do so. Um, and there are folks that I know will be able to help you do that, but I don't want you to get caught up in what could be um, the limitations and things like that of current systems in place um, when you all started as such a really community focused and community based organization use that to propel yourself forward but really think about all the things that LaShonda mentioned in her comments Marcia do you have any notes to add just ditto ditto <laughs> all right Thank you. Panelists can go ahead and submit their scores. Um, the next one up is Slovenian Museum and Archives. I think this is the point where we are uh, diverting a bit from our original plans. We're flipping some things around just so we can meet everyone's schedules here. Um, so yes, this one might be a little bit off track from our audience guide. We've got Slovenian Museum and Archives coming up now. And after that, we'll do Sankofa, Mojuba, and that's the last one. So, Slovenian Museum and Archives. Their mission is to provide a resolution to the critical situation in the Slovenian community of Cleveland today. They are rapidly losing their beloved ancestors and are faced with the real possibility of losing their ethnic history and identity as well. They quote, we are the privileged inheritors of a legacy not only of precious pieces of rich ethnic, artistic and linguistic works, but also a compelling story of migrating and thriving in America and in our city of Cleveland. So the Slovenian Museum and Archives was organized in Cleveland in 2007. They officially became a nonprofit uh, with the state of Ohio in 2008 and received their 501c3 status in 2010. They have an operating board that meets several times per year and their funding comes through grants, donations, and money raised from differing events. Tyrone is the lead reader for this one, so you can take it from here. Okay, thank you. Um, in regards to with their public benefit, I gave the organization a good score. Uh, the author does explain the uniqueness of the Slovenian uh, community in, the Cle in Cleveland, along with uh, describing how they obtained the exhibits that they show. What was not clear, however, was when the author discusses how they work with other organizations 
with uh, different ethnic groups or, or, or races. You know, just wanted to hear a little bit more about how they incorporate these other organizations within the work that they do. Um, because the way that it was described, it wasn't really clear to me if they bring in others to learn their culture or are they bringing in others to so they can learn some other cultures. It just wasn't really clear. Um, so just a little bit more clarity in regards to that. I, I, my assumption was is that they're bringing in people from the outside to learn more about the Slovenian culture, but the way it was worded, it was a little bit, um, a little bit confusing. So just a little bit more clarity in regards to that. In regards to the artistic, I gave the organization a good score. Uh, the organization dis displayed a lot of creativity during the COVID-19 pandemic in regards to doing a switch. Uh, so it would have been helpful to, to learn if they were able to reach a more broader audience because of this switch that they had to do and how they plan on capturing and retaining that new audience and that, that new broader um, population that they were able to reach because of the switch from in-person to virtual. So just curious what lessons that, it, it'd, been, it'd been interesting to hear more about lessons that they were learned through this process and how there's gonna be more incorporated moving forward. Uh, and this really came about in regards to talking about the response to their future plans. Um, really would have been interested to see how they were going to operate more from what they've learned and moving forward. It just wasn't really clear in the application. The author did touch on, in regards to organizational capacity, the author did touch on some of their future plans, but it would have been helpful to see if things would have been uh, learned over the past year. Uh, so, and, and also leading into uh, organizational capacity. I gave them a strong score. It was good to see that they're planning on increasing their, their overall structure and organization of the operate where the board operates and how they're going to incorporate more, tapping into more of the talents and the, and the, res, and the resources that their board and volunteers do have. But again, it, it really didn't go into a lot of details in regards to how they're gonna utilize that and how they plan on moving forward. And also, it would have been interested to um, hear how they planning on how they plan on utilizing the the festival to increase the resources. They they indicated that, but they really didn't talk about what their strategies are as far as like how to capture more uh, revenue from the the festival. So overall, I, I think that the the author could have benefited from providing a little bit more detail. Again, just kind of harking back in the fact that these are people from outside the Northeastern Ohio community, not as, as familiar with the organization or the work that they do. So it, the more details and the more information and background that you can provide, the better off it is for us to be able to understand it and see your vision as the way that you're uh, interpreting it internally. So that would have been helpful from, a, from a, a reader's perspective. And that concludes my uh, review. Thank you. Are there any new or different comments from LaShonda or Jemaine on this one? Uh, I, I just got very few. Uh, I think you, your work is really important. I think you I think you know that, that if you feel like your culture is vanishing, you are the generation to, to hold the line. So I really can commend you for finding ways to, to, to do that. Um, so I, I gave you strong across the board. Uh, one of the things I would have liked to see, I, I thought that your reimagining for COVID was fabulous, but I actually would have liked to seen some of the floats and all the things that I heard about. I really would have liked to see uh, some of that so that I could really understand uh, what you're fighting for. Um, I'm being told, but I want to see what is this great cultural thing that you're fighting for. I would just also add, again, the thing about succession planning. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mantra because I've seen it not go so well for really fabulous organizations. And I think it is something we're fighting for for you. One uh, piece of advice as 
as with Tyrone, I wasn't sure how you were sharing culture, if it was you were bringing people in, because honestly, when you talked about it, it almost seemed like it was an add on <laughs> that the other folks were just kind of there. And that's OK, because it's all about your show. But just be mindful how you talk about that when you are talking about connecting with cultural groups that are not your own, that uh if it is authentic, it is authentic. If it's not, it comes through as a othering almost. It's like, yeah, you know, we got these black folks running around and the Asian folks too. That's really like landed in me when I read it and it was said more than once. I would say that as you kind of continue to think about that expansion, thinking about what does an artist in residence program look like for you so that folks are able to embody the culture and share it beyond just the festival and what that might mean over time. Those are my final comments. Thank you. Jermaine, did you have anything to add? Um, really quickly, I think I got the sense that the that that you all are in kind of the beginning of really thinking about the kind of course cultural collaboration and different things of that sort from the application. I did rate you all strong across the board as well. But that kind of came forth. Um, and so I think, right, just continue to think about what that looks like. I know that it may not feel challenging because I'm really holding the purpose of the organization, right? And like, if you feel like, again, like your culture is, is dying, you want to hold that. And that's where a lot of your attention goes. Um, so I just think even looking at that, how does a partnership with other um, cultures that may feel the same or maybe experiencing the same type of fear, what does that look like? You know what I mean? So that way, again, going back to LaShonda's point of authenticity, that, uh, that is the, the thread there. How do you support each other in making sure that your cultures do not kind of die out or different things of that sort? So I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Um, panelists can go ahead and <clears throat> submit their scores on that one. The next application we have up is Sankofa Fine Art Plus. Um, I'll read the description in just a second, but I'm also wondering if we can just step off of our, um, uh, Mar Marsha is the lead reader on this one, but I'm wondering if we can just give LaShonda the chance to respond first, because she's going to step off the the Zoom at four o'clock, um, if you have comments, LaShonda. So I'll give you guys just a second here to pull up your information and I'll, I'll read this piece here. So the mission of Sankofa Fine Art Plus is to develop and advocate for African-American artists and present African-American art as a credible and meaningful art form for neighborhood revitalization through intergenerational community education and collaboration. Sankofa held fine art expos from 2000 to 2011. In 2013, they engaged in a renowned muralist to, they engaged a renowned muralist to train local artists in mural making. In 2015, Sankofa created mural programs to bring expressive artwork out of the gallery setting and into the public. Since then, Sankofa has installed almost 10 community engaged murals in greater Cleveland to beautify and uplift blighted areas in Cleveland. Their new location provides a gallery and workspace for artists, shows, and community event usage. So Marsha is the lead reader, but I do want to just give LaShonda a chance to, to say her piece here before she has to sign off. Oh, OK. Well, thank you. Um, I, I gave an exceptional uh, for public, uh, for public, um, I gave a benefit, public benefit. Public benefit, yeah. And, and the reason why is because I, I really feel like the work, you are deeply grassroots oriented, that the work you have done is an exemplar example of what a socially engaged art practice looks like. That uh, what happened with the vote mural where the art becomes a catalyst and then it creates this whole other uh, discussion for community that it is, it, it is born out of community work and is an example of the power of the arts. Uh, so I really love that. Um, I, I do, I wanna read my comments because I, I, 
it, uh, it is clear you have a committed to developing a community-based socially engaged process. This is extremely hard work as it demands you to balance the needs and desires of the artist to create with the needs and the desires of the community to have their voice heard. Oftentimes the artist must also work as an organizer, the teaching artists and translate communities ideas into action. And I think you have done that extremely well. And uh, as a socially engaged artist, I commend it because I know it's it's much harder. You've got to shut up as an artist, can't be about you, but you've also have to dive in and learn to listen and be extremely engaged. And I could see that you are committed to the communities that you're working in, uh, that you're committed to not just showing up as an artist, but actually showing up as a member of this community, which leads me to organizational capacity. Uh, I think it's great that you're going to increase your community engagement, and I want to see what that's going to look like for you because you are already deeply engaged in attending meetings and listening and going back and forth. So I'm just really curious, what does that mean for you? Uh, that you're operating on it. What I wrote was that you're a lean, mean, creative volunteering machine. And all of that's fabulous, but I definitely want to see as you expand your capacity that you also expand the ability to start to pay the artists at least what they're, they're, they're worth. And if we can't hit worth, we've got to hit more than just we're paying for supplies and the artist is giving a lot of work uh, and time and effort, attending meetings, design process at charrettes, going back and forth with the community is a lot of work. And so as you continue to build that capacity, also thinking about what does it mean to try to get to that point where you can pay the artists more and more for their services, because it may be viewed as a part uh, community service, but it's also a lot of work. And so just being mindful that as you increase that, uh, you look at how to do that and that you look at other community-based processes, I would encourage you to check out all of the work of Art Place America. They have funded projects all across the United States, which have one focus, how are the arts uh, serve the purpose of community transformation and meeting some folks from there. I'm not sure, I didn't look to see if there were any in the Cleveland area, may give you additional strategies, how to increase your budget, which will increase your capacity and create the, and just and create the impact that you've already um, been able to exhibit on your leaning creative volunteer machine budget. You've done great work. Thank you. Thanks, LaShonda. Feel free to sign out when you're done. She, LaShonda is not um, a reviewer on the last application, so we won't be missing her for that. Thank you. Um, Marsha, thanks for sharing that. Um, please take the floor. Of course. Um, thank you. I gave this organization also um, a, an exceptional in terms of public benefit. Um, I, I do want to say, as a non-Ohioan, uh, I would have liked to have known more about the Granville community um, and just have more context for your work. I think that um, I, I, um, I love that there was like this unanimous community approval process. I loved... Um, the paint by number technique so that anybody could paint. I, I do, would have liked to know more about the community engagement process. How do you decide what communities to create a mural with? Um, how do you identify the partner organizations? I also wanted to know who really comes to paint um, and um, if they're in different communities, are they able to get to the Sankofa studios where the painting is happening um, and what does that mean? Um, but, um, but, the, or, but the artistic vitality section was very strong, um, exceptional. Uh, artistic and cultural vibrancy, I gave a strong. Um, I couldn't get a sense of how inclusive the artistic process was with local artists. Um, you had mentioned that 
you invite several artists to submit designs. Um, you know, how do they get invited? Who are they? Are they, they always the same artists? Um, I um, I agree with Lashonda that you have to, that thinking about artist pay is really critical um, for long term sustainability as people. Um, hit their volunteer capacity. And I'm just a strong proponent of artists need to be paid for the work that they're doing. Uh oh, okay. Um, but uh, but I, I think it was strong. Um, I gave the organizational capacity a, for, uh, a, a fair um, and please take uh, minutes of your meeting so you have a record of what you're doing. It's really important records. Interested um, if there are board stipends, I couldn't figure that out. Um, and if they are, what are they? Um, the board is really small with two founders and at least one uh, person who identified as the founder's sister and the FY21 budget was sparse in details. Um, that's all, thank you, I was a red lighted, so. All good. Tyrone, do you have any notes to share? Uh, no, overall, uh, my two colleagues did a, a great job, as, as always, in summarizing it. Um, just in, in summary, uh, public benefit, I gave them a strong score. Artistic and cultural, I gave it a strong. And organizational capacity, gave it a good. Uh, the only thing that I, I would uh, like to add is, I think has been kind of touched on a little bit, that as the organization moves forward, um, as is shifting from being mainly uh, concentrating on doing murals to wanting to expand their work and, and be more inclusive and be more engaging in regards to the art that they're providing, that they make sure that they take the time to sit back and really evaluate what their missions and goals are, because this is, it could potentially become a mission creep, you know, and, and it becomes a little bit cumbersome in regards to as you're making this adjustment. So, uh, particularly with the size of the organization, I, I would just, you know, uh, advise them that as they're doing this to make sure that they're taking the necessary steps to understand as they're transitioning that what those, what the resources will be needed and what they really want to be as they're making that transition. Thank you. Um, panelists, you go ahead and submit your scores. The next application is Mojuba Dance Collective. And this is our last application for the day as well. Mojuba Dance Collective is an African contemporary dance company and community platform that seeks to celebrate and honor the cultural and spiritual dance traditions of the African diaspora to restore community wellness, share and validate the black narrative experience and reestablish cultural connection. Mojuba Dance Collected was founded by Erin Weaver, making its public debut in 2019. Building on the foundation of Erin Ministries, Mojuba offers work and experiences which center on the stories of, the Black, Ameri of Black America and diaspora. Mojuba performs and facilitates workshops connecting diverse audiences in themes of remembrance, community, and wellness. In Cleveland, they've performed at Eaton, the Cleveland Dance Festival, Cleveland Museum, Karamu House, at schools and events through the city. So the lead reader is Jermaine. Thank you. Good afternoon, Majuba Dance Collective. Um, so jumping right into it for a public benefit, I rated you as good, right on the cusp of strong. Um, and I'll explain why. Um, so I felt like you gave a, you have a good understanding of the community you serve, um, given your own lived experience as an organization led by Black women um, and through your community engagement efforts. I wanted to learn a bit more though. So when I say that, I say, tell me more about um, how your lived experiences um, or the common threads you're seeing with those that you serve come into play in regards to the work that you are producing. 
um, and also thinking about the diversity of experience and the diversity of the experience of Blackness and Black womanhood. Um, what does that look like um, as you are doing your work? Um, so how do you keep your pulse on the needs of the Black community? And when you say that, I'm just thinking about, again, language, um, which Black community are you referring to? Are you referring to the Black community in the neighborhood in which you are kind of like founded? Are you referring to the Black community in Cleveland, Ohio as a whole? And again, if so, just really taking into consideration the diversity within the Black community and where do you see um, Majuba fitting into that? Um, Again, more questions. How do you foster the environment of mutual respect and support? Um, this what are some even broad examples of that. Um, how can we as grant reviewers, along with the residents of Cleveland and neighboring neighborhood suburbs, rest assured that you're listening? So in that connect the dots between that statement and then the statement that you gave about the series of free classes, um, that you held in local parks during the onslaught of COVID and um, the kind of uprisings that we experienced last year, just do some con some dot connecting. So is this something that you heard from the community and is something that you did, or just again, your observations, your sensing that this is something that the community needed in that time, just add that there. Um, for artistic and cultural vibrancy, I rated you as strong. Um, I absolutely love um, the forward thinking of the emerging Black choreographers um, incubator. I thought that is great. Um, I absolutely loved watching the testimonial from Dr. Bomani. I thought that was an excellent um, way to really introduce the impact of um, not only the incubator of itself, but possibly the work that you're doing. Um, you know, you talked about folks kind of moonlighting and coming into dance, they're doctors, they're doing other things. So I think that's a real kind of a value proposition that this is the work that your collective is helping. You are helping people who may not be able to um, dance full time or had dreams of dancing full time and went another route to actually realize that and the quality of life that increased from that. So again, I just thought that was an excellent supplemental um, piece that you created. Um, you mentioned um, kind of like the intergenerational effort of your work um, before in the public uh, benefit section. So I just wanted to know more about the importance of that to you and your work as a whole. Um, I love that you incorporate rest into your schedule. It's just a piece that I saw as in, in your planning. I think that is great. We don't talk about rest enough. Um, for aura capacity, I rated you as strong as well. Um, you have all done a great amount of work in a very short time. Um, and it's clear that you are thinking about the org and its sustainability as you move forward. Um, your board is from the BIPOC community. I love that you um, obtain participant feedback and that it's incorporated and used in your planning and also feedback from your instructors. Um, I realized that you all are volunteers right now. A lot of times that's how a lot of work starts, especially in arts and culture, but happy to see that you're moving into a strategic planning process um, to think about how you can start to raise more funds and, and possibly pay yourselves and other folks. Um, I thought your goals were good. They were measurable. Just include kind of like that timeline on when you want to measure them by. Um, and I thought your budget was good. I just always say like, of course, you get all the money we want to spend every cent that we have. But if it's possible to have a little bit of something left over, by all means, that is okay, at least in my eyes. Um, so I also just wanted to say, just do your work and thinking about the some of the organizations that we met today, there's such a ripe opportunity for partnership right in, in kind of like the CAC community. And so that's just something to, to think about in regards to folks that have like missions and art modalities and things of that sort. So that concludes my review. Thank you. Do we have any comments from Tyrone or Marcia to add? Um, Sure, I rated um, public benefit as exceptional. 
um, you've going out during uh, the pandemic and hosting free uh, classes in, in the parks at a time when there was also a lot of negativity and trauma from uh, from from the police brutality. Um, I, I really like that. Um, I also liked that you had um, multiple bodies and abilities um, that you worked with. I would have liked to have known more about what exactly that looks like. Um, for cultural and artistic vibrancy, I, um, I also gave you an exceptional, I love the idea of venturing off the stage to perform in places of public memory. And I want to come and, and see that um, work. Um, and I love the multidisciplinary approach that you are taking. Um, and um, I, I, I thought for the size of your budget and the age of the organization, your, your organizational capacity was strong. Uh, once again, my colleagues have covered everything I pretty much, uh, I, I was looking at my notes and says, well, that's got that covered, got that covered, got that covered. So pretty good on that. Um, so overall, public benefit, strong, uh, artistic, cultural, vibrancy, strong, organizational capacity, strong. Um, I, I guess the, the only thing that I had to, as, as an observation, um, uh, regards to the artists that you have listed working. Uh, my only question was, are these artists from the Northern Ohio area and they specialize in these cultures or are you bringing culture uh, artists from out, uh, outside, you know, from this area to work on that? That was the only question that I really had. It wasn't quite clear on, on that piece. So, but overall, uh, raise you strong across the board. All right, thank you, panelists. You can go ahead and submit your scores on that one. And that was our last application for the day, which means that concludes our cultural heritage panel review, our first one ever. So thank you, congratulations, everyone. Um, thank you so much to our panelists for your service to Cuyahoga Arts and Culture and um, you know, your time in reading these applications. We appreciate your time and attention, not just today, but for the past month and more leading up to this that you've dedicated um, to our panel process, review, reviewing these applications. I know that your comments um, will be taken um, seriously by our applicants and will help make these organizations stronger and you know, help CAC become, develop a stronger program as well. Um, it does not look like we have any correction forms or public comments to add. So as we are concluding and submitting our final scores, I do, want to um, go around the room and give our panelists the platform one last time to share any last uh, general advice for our current applicants and future applicants as well. I just placed a, uh, the order back into the chat and we can start with Marsha if you'd like to share any last notes here. Sure. Um, you know, I think the context and history was something that across the board was missing from a lot of the proposals. And I, I think they're just so critical. I encourage people to just talk a little bit more. Some of the answers were short. Um, There's some space. We really wanna know um, where, where are you situated and what it, where have you come from? Um, and it will help us understand where you're going. Um, the other thing I would say is that, you know, there is so much passion in the work um, and I really appreciate the passion that came through in every proposal that I read. Um, I think that um, more examples, um, like don't tell us, that you're, you're great, show us examples of how you're great. Um, that would be my, my additions. Uh, 
Um, absolute ditto to what Marsha said. Please use, well, first let me say, um, holding the work that you're all doing, um, holding it tightly in regards to its important work, your reasons for doing the work, how you show up for your community is amazing. And so I wanna reiterate again that what we were doing today, what I was doing today was looking at the application, right? And not at your work and critiquing your work. It was the application. And with that being said, please use these applications as a storytelling apparatus. Um, I forgot who said it earlier, but they were like, brag, you know, tell us what you are out here doing in your community. What does it look like? Bring us in. Um, use direct quotes from participants. Um, those supplemental material areas, use those to describe what's going on in the photos. If you upload a photo, if you can, like all of those things are really important for us to fully understand what you're doing. And I know it's a lot to try to condense into words. And that's something I'm holding to is that I know that we are asking everyone to possibly communicate in a way that isn't you know, second nature for you to do, especially as artists, right? All of us aren't writers. All of us may not be able to do that. Um, so a tip is to possibly, you know, do your best in the written portion of this, but use that supplemental area as a way to either put in a video of you speaking about certain things or someone else speaking or whatever that might be to really help articulate um, the impact of your work and why you're doing it. So um, again, this is a storytelling apparatus. I know it's a, it's a grant application. There's a lot of feelings and different things that come with doing this, but I think the impetus of this particular um, funding opportunity is to really hear what you are doing and how you are uplifting um, the communities and the cultures that you are representing. So brag, Tell us how, how dope you are and how people think you are dope in as much ways as possible. Um, that would have been extremely helpful. I think that's something that I just kind of saw across the board um, was that. So can't emphasize that enough. Again, same things I would say, you know, utilize these applications as an opportunity to market and showcase yourselves. Um, uh, even people who are familiar with you or know who are, are in the communities that you are, they may not know everything that you're doing. So utilize this as an opportunity to really showcase the work that you're doing and, and sell yourself. And, you know, and, and, and again, brag, show the great work that you're doing and, not, and don't be bashful or, hum, or too humble not to really talk about the things that you're, you're doing. Because when you don't really elaborate or put things in there, particularly when it comes to a grant application and a grant writer, a grant reader, from someone who is not familiar with your organization or even the communities that you're, or from the communities that you're, you're serving, when it's not a lot of details there, is very you leave a lot of open doors for a lot of interpretation. You don't want to do that. You want to be able to tell your story and not let others have to interpret what your story is. So again, I would just encourage you. Read the question and be sure that you're addressing the questions as, as they're asked so that uh, you leave no room for interpretation. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, with that, we will conclude our uh, panel review here. We are continuing at 1.30 with our review for the general operating support program. So if we've got any listeners joining for that, we will see you then. So with that, we can go ahead and end